I'm Juliana, and I'm excited to help you prepare for your student ambassador experience this summer. Confession time. When I enrolled in the program, I felt like it was a big responsibility to be representing my hometown as a student ambassador, and I worried that I might not be very good at it. I remember thinking, what if I lose my passport or forget to set my alarm clock? What if I can't remember how to be polite in another culture and people think I'm an ugly American? What if I'm not a good student ambassador? Well, I'm here to tell you it's easier than you think to be a great student ambassador. In fact, I can sum it up in three simple ideas. One, be aware. Two, take care. Three, share. And that is all you need to know. Good luck. And of course, I'm just kidding. Let's take a little closer look at each of these and learn a few tips on how to travel smart. Number one, be aware. There's so much to take in when you're traveling in a totally new place. Being aware means keeping your head up and your eyes open. Look people in the eye when you're walking down the street, not because you're suspicious, but because you're confident and you don't have to fear strangers. You know the three keys to keeping yourself and your gear safe. Picture this. You're chatting with this good-looking stranger. He's not that much older than you, speaks great English, and is so excited to tell you all about his country and learn all about yours. It's your own impromptu people-to-people -people moment. But then comes the danger. He asks you for your hotel room number so you can finish your conversation tomorrow. Warning, stalker alert. The right answer in this situation is, we're slammed tomorrow, so I won't have any time to talk to you, but have a good life. Ciao. The key here, have a great time making friends when you're with your delegation. People who want to get you alone should be left alone. Because student ambassadors visit some sites that are famous the world over, you might find yourself crammed in a subway car or crowded around a monument. Those are the times you'll be glad you have a travel wallet or pouch to carry your money underneath your clothes. Stashing your cash in your pocket or the outside your backpack makes it way too easy for thieves to make off with your stuff. Key number two, don't be flashing your Benjamins and keep your money on the down low. Also in those crowded places, you might want to keep your eyes open for the occasional scam. For example, a pickpocketer might stage a distraction over here, say what looks like a medical emergency. When you step toward him to try to help, his buddy grabs your stuff over here. The idea is, when you move, move your valuables too. You can take them with you. These are good guidelines for every traveler. Your leaders know them too, because they are trained special ambassador agents who will be vigilant against any possible risk. So, if your leader or delegation manager asks you to pick up your backpack or stick a little closer to the group, you can be aware that they're just looking to keep you safe. And since we're talking about safety, you may be asking yourself, why do I have to wear khakis and my people-to-people -people ambassador shirt while I'm traveling? Isn't that like wearing a flashing sign that says, I'm a tourist, come steal my camera? Well, you have to understand that you won't be wearing it every day. You'll wear it to the airport on travel day so that it's easy to keep your delegation together. Or, if you're like me and meeting up with the rest of your delegation that day, the shirt makes you easy to find. You'll wear it again if you're headed to a VIP meeting in your destination so that you look like the smart, polished student ambassador that you are. The one part of your student ambassador outfit that you will wear every day is your name badge and lanyard. It isn't just there to make you look official and intelligent, even though it does, it also has emergency phone numbers on the back. So no matter where you are, help is just a phone call away. And did I mention all the schnazzy pins you can put on it? Look at it, it's pretty cool. Now we come to number two, taking care. You can't enjoy your journey if you're sick in bed or sunburnt to a crisp. Mom and dad aren't here to remind you to take your meds or eat your veggies. This is your chance to take care of yourself and show how independent and responsible you are. Let's talk clothes first. The most important thing you can pack is good, comfortable walking shoes. Wear socks too for added cushiness. Your feet will love you for that. Your apparel guide shows you the ins and outs of student ambassador style and your packing list will help you determine the best clothes, shoes, and accessories for your itinerary. What you'll need in like Ecuador is a far cry from what I packed to go to the United Kingdom. I was really glad I had brought some different layers, like a hoodie, a sweater, and a coat. I could wear one layer if the London fog looked a little threatening or throw all of them on at once to keep warm. See, I didn't realize when I left home that traveling to Scotland is almost like traveling to Alaska. 
I'd only packed one pair of long pants and I was freezing in what the Brits call the pocky temperatures. And I know that didn't sound right. Sorry. On days the sun did decide to shine on us, I had sunscreen, sunglasses, and a hat all ready in my backpack to keep me from burning. Of course, what you put in your body is just as important as what you put on it. I don't care if you're a picky eater at home. You'll want to eat well every meal during your journey. You're going to need tons of energy for all your learning and exploring. Trust me, it's not going to be hard to eat well. You'll have lots of healthy options to fill up on, including the chance to taste spoons that are popular in your destination. My favorite, scones with clotted cream. Yum. And don't forget an insulated water bottle. Carrying water is a good way to keep yourself refreshed throughout the day. There's no sense in traveling to a beautiful new country and then dragging through it dehydrated and miserable. Now here's a secret I can share with you. Ambassador to ambassador. At night, it's a really good idea to sleep. My roommates and I would stay up talking some nights until 1 or 2 o'clock. And then, surprise, we'd be sleepwalking our way through a castle the next day. My advice to you, wait until breakfast or your next motor coach ride to confess your secret celebrity crush. But I'm not telling you mine. If you have a condition that needs medicine, your leader will know and be watching out for you. But just like at school, your teacher leader can't be your pharmacy. You have to be responsible to take it on your own. Taking care of yourself also means taking care of your stuff. Your parents may be trusting you with some very valuable things for your travel. A camera, a cell phone, a credit card. Before you leave, choose a specific place for everything. Then train yourself to put it back in that place every time. I'll give you an example. I had a special pocket inside my backpack that was perfect for my camera. I may have kept it strapped to my wrist all morning to take pictures, but when we'd stop for lunch, I'd immediately put it back in its very own pocket. The last thing I wanted was to have to go back to a restaurant to try and find the camera I left on their table. Finally, to be a good student ambassador, you need to share in a couple of ways. I won't lie, traveling with a group sometimes means doing things you'd rather not do. Like giving your roommate first choice of the beds, or keeping your stuff picked up so it's not in anyone's way. Or getting up early to be sure you're ready on time. But when you share the load and treat people with respect, your friends will probably return the favor which makes everyone that much more happy and relaxed. Once you've practiced respect within your delegation, it becomes easy to show friendship to new people and share your enthusiasm. Your new friends overseas are going to be thrilled to share their country and culture with you when you show them that you're interested, informed, and friendly. It wasn't until I traveled as a student ambassador that I discovered that I love meeting new people. I got my first taste of it the day I started my program, when I finally met my delegation from another part of the country. I was learning about new cultures before I ever left the States. And meeting people overseas was even more amazing. I went to England and Ireland thinking I wouldn't have much in common with these people, besides language and obsession with the royal family. But it didn't take much sharing of our lives and cultures before I realized that these students are just like me. They may live a little differently, but they love to laugh and hang out with their friends. And they're constantly looking at the world to see how they can make it a little better. So hopefully you learned the three keys of being aware, how easy it is to take care of yourself and your things, and the benefits of sharing with your new friends. It doesn't matter where in the world you're traveling. I can tell you from experience that your time as an ambassador will change you. In the process of becoming a student ambassador, you'll find you've become more mature, more confident, and more interested in things that are happening in another hemisphere. So get ready to amaze your parents and yourself and have the time of your life while you're doing it. Bon voyage!